everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. This is a follow-up video to the video I did on New Year's Day in collaboration with AJOS or Art Joy Sharing on Facebook. I made this book, which is um, a three-piece binding. And when I made it, I had three signatures and they were so fat and so awkward that I took the book apart and I divided up my um, my signatures to where this is very heavy duty um, watercolor paper so I had four pieces in each signature so I divided those down into one two three four five signatures that only had two pieces of paper folded in half to make one signature because it was just so fat and so awkward that it, it was hard to work with. As you can see, the book really does lay flat. I mean, it, it really, and it's very flexible because I built that into it when I did the first video. I made the signatures way larger, I mean the area for signatures way larger than they needed to be. Since I filmed the video, I thought, okay, so now I've put all the signatures in, I want to put in here, and I took the paper that I had run off on the computer, and I covered another piece of um, chipboard, and then glued that over where my three whole pamphlet stitches were for the five signatures that I went from three to five. When I did that, I discovered, I'm not thinking about it, that I have huge gaps in between my signatures. So I'm going to show you how to fix this if this is your desired results. If, if this many signatures or this many pieces of paper is not what you need, you need more. So I'm going to modify this book and I'm going to show you how to modify it with something that I learned on another YouTuber's channel. Mine will not be exactly the way she did hers, but I've seen lots of people fix books this way, so I'm gonna show you how to do it for the one that I made on the 1st of January. Let me get my stuff. Okay, so I measured these pages so I could remember, I thought that if I folded these in half, which is eight and a half by 11s, that I could get the same size, but I forgot I made this book a little bit smaller. So the height is seven and a half inches for the signature. And then the width is four and three fourths inches. So I've taken six sheets of computer paper. And I'm gonna fold them. And this is the best way to do it is to fold all your sheets at the same time so that you keep the creep down to a minimum. I'm not gonna put these in a book press to make them um, lay flatter because it's not as hard to do this as it was to do the watercolor paper. So I'm going to do three or four of these signatures like this, and then I'm gonna get my thread and my needle, and I'm gonna show you how to fix this. Okay, I cut my papers, seven and a half by four and three quarters, and I did four signatures with six sheets each folded in half. And I have four gaps in between the signatures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this gap to sew in this signature. Now, this will be easier for you if you don't do this. If you have one of these sewn and you like to cover up your back, this is a way to augment this without poking holes into your lovely spine piece here. If you didn't sew that on, then this will be just like sewing in another signature, you know, like you did these. But this is especially useful for this kind of thing as uh, basically an afterthought after, you know, I glued that piece on there. I decided that wasn't the smartest thing I ever did. So I'm going to need to make a template for my holes here. I just took a leftover piece of paper. It's not anything fabulous. I'm using a smaller needle because this is going to be poked through 
um, a less hard surface than the chipboard of the book. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half. I'm just going to do an easy way to do this. I don't really care about how anything especially uh, how it especially looks for you know doing this piece all right so this is the same length as the paper itself now I'm going to decide where I want to put the holes and again the holes you put in this when you've covered up your spine has nothing to do with what you've already sewn in let me see I don't have I need to use this ruler here uh, pencil, 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 pencil. <laughs> my pencil's too short. I can't ever find it in my stuff. All right, so this is seven and a half inches. So half a seven is three and a half. So it'd be four and three fourths for the middle. Four and three fourths. And then I'm going to do. I'm going to scoot it up to where it says eight, and I'm going to do an inch from the bottom. I'm going to scoot it this way, back down. Oh, I'm sorry, out of frame. So I made my my center line here, and then I just you know it was four and three quarters. So what I did was I just scooted it up to eight here, and then marked one inch from the bottom right there. And then that's what I'm going to do on the other end. I'm going to take the other end and put one inch at the end and then just mark one inch. Now, yes, this is measuring technically, but you know, this is not measuring. So I'm just gonna do the three hole pamphlet stitch for this. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold it so that the marking is on the inside. I'm gonna open this up, slide it in here. And I'm not even gonna put it in the cradle I'm going to get my paper piercer and just go through here like this. I'm trying to make this as painless as possible. There that. And this one. Let me go finish the rest and I'll be right back. All right, so I poked holes in all my signatures. There's four. What I need to do now is really measuring. I know, it's painful. I need to know how much space I have between the, the edge of this signature and the edge of this one. So I'm going to say it is, I'm going to slide that under there, that way I get more accurate. It's three quarters of an inch. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go smack dab down the middle here and draw a line where I want to sew my signature in. I just want to make sure my line is straight so that it's not all wonky in the book. Let's take a look. Ah, good enough. I'm not going to poke holes in it because like I said, I have this extra piece, this extra piece here that's going to make it darn near impossible to poke a hole through it. And plus, I really don't want to mess up the way this looks on here. So what I'm going to end up doing is getting a piece of cardstock and I'm going to make it a little less than three quarters of an inch wide. That's for signature number four. I did number them one through four, so that one will be in here. This one, I'll measure and see what I need for this one. And this one is much smaller. It's about a half an inch, so I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch, my pencil, and it's going to be right down the middle like I did the other one, only this one, oops, got hair in here. This one will be about a quarter of an inch down the middle. And it's crooked. Let me scoot 
the bottom out a little bit more. This one will be for signature number three. Number two is a little more than half an inch, but I, I'll just do a quarter of an inch. Get this one in here. And I'm sliding it underneath the signature to make it even with the little tick mark at the beginning of the ruler. So I'll make it just a hair over a quarter of an inch, just a pencil mark over a quarter of an inch. Make this straight up and down so I kind of get it accurate. Although, after what I did to the spine by gluing it on there, I guess I shouldn't get excited about doing anything accurate. All right, so here is this. Oh, just a hair over. That'll be the center for signature number two. And then signature number one. I think this will be closer to what number four was. It's about three quarters of an inch. So let's see. I will go a hair higher. It's a little under three quarters. So I will eyeball it and look to see where I think center is. Good enough. So I need to cut out of, um, I'm going to use cardstock. So this will be three quarters of an inch. This will be half an inch. This will be half an inch. And this will be three quarters of an inch. So I need two three quarters and two half inch. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna cut Three quarters of an inch on here. I need two of those that are three quarters. And two that are half an inch. So three quarters, and I think this metal strip right here is half an inch wide. It moved. Okay. Oops, we don't have the book underneath it, right? So let's see. I need to be the same width as the metal bar here. That's better. Okay. So I have two that are half an inch and two that are three quarters of an inch. Where's my other half inch? Here. All right, so I have number one, it's a three quarters. Number, I mean, number four. Number one is also three quarters. Number three, number two is a half inch. And Where's number three? Here we go. And the other, and number three is a half an inch. The other half an inch. All right. So I've already poked my holes in here. So now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to let me wrap this. I'm going to fold this the other direction so that I can see the marks here. I'm going to poke a hole in them. No, I can't do it that way, can I? I'm going to eyeball it. One. Two. Three. So that's 
One, two, three. Okay, so I picked a needle that was not as large as the needles that I use to sew in the signatures because they don't need to, it doesn't need to be because it is not going through chipboard, it's only going through cardstock. So for my thread, I'm going to use my wax linen from Lineco if I can find the end of it. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, let's see what happened here. Where's the end? Oh my goodness, the wax is so good that it stuck to the end of my thread. <laughs> okay, we will not be using this because I'm not going to do this now. So instead, we'll take this other one where I can find the end. <laughs> I'm just going to roll off some. I'm not, like I said in a previous video, I'm not one for going four times the length and then multiply. I don't want to fool around with that mess. Don't mash that against the thing. You need to find the end. All right. I'm going to thread this to this needle. There we go. And you can tell it's waxy because it's a kind of a booger to get through there. All right, so this is a half inch one. I need signature number three. Make sure I've got my holes lined up. I forgot to cut it the same length as the signature. So let me cut the ends off here so I can make sure that I get it even with the bottom of the paper. I think this one might be right at the top. Yep, okay. So then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pretend this is my um, board I'm gonna sew it into. So I'm gonna do my needle in the middle And I'm sewing it onto this strip of paper here. I mean cardstock, sorry. Now you can do this with another piece of chipboard, but I just decided to go ahead and use it this way. All right, so you're going to do it just like you do a three-hole pamphlet stitch. It's going to be a little more fiddly because you're juggling a moving piece of paper plus the other pieces of paper in the signature. So I'm going to put it through here and then through the bottom. It'll get easier in a second when you tighten it up. All right, there we go. And you don't want to pull like massively hard. You do that at the end. I'm going to put this through the top just like you would any other three hole pamphlet stitch. Then I'm going to flip it over, make sure it goes through here. And then we're going to go up through the middle just like we would any other one. Okay, so the card filled up and shut my video off right in the middle of everything. I did finish doing the um, tying in the middle and going through the whole, the whole, you know, the three pole pamphlet thing. So what you're left with, something that looks like this. You're going to have this funny little strip here, like this. Then you're going to take I was trying to poke holes and do other things constructive while I was waiting for the video to copy. Then I'm going to, oh, well, let's see. Um, yeah, you're going to take your glue and you're going to put it on the strip that you sewed your signature to. This is signature number three. So that's one, two, three. And you're going to take this and you're going to put it down in the middle and press down on the other parts. 
Now there is a more complicated way to do this and that's sewing on a sewing machine. But because I've already done the damage to my book by, um, well I say damage, altered my book by putting um, the, the piece on the end, I can't sew, I could sew this, but I'd be sewing through um, chipboard and I really did not want to do that. So you just kind of press down until you think it's stuck and you make sure you've got it in there really well because I know you're going to do all kinds of weird stuff to your paper, like wet media, glue book stuff. So you really want this to stay in there. And when you close your book, all you've done is just enhanced your book by adding another signature. Now, if you did not use heavy-duty chipboard, if you used a lightweight chipboard or like what I did, I used the, um, the Triscuit box to make this from, then you can run, uh, I think that you have to use a heavy-duty I would use a more heavy duty needle on my sewing machine like what you would sew denim with or leather and then you can run a stitch here and you can run your stitch here. It's kind of tough. It'll be kind of hard getting it in between these two bumps right here. So that's why I don't sew when I when I add to my stuff. I don't sew it with a sewing machine. If I'm going to make something like this which I saw another YouTuber do. She took her st original strip, made the lines down at where she was gonna butt the signatures, and she lined up the signatures one by one on there and sewed down the middle of the signature onto that extra piece of cardstock or chipboard that she was using. Then she laid that down with glue on the back of it, like what I just did this one, and she laid it down onto the spine. So you won't see any of her sewing on the outside of her spine because she did the sewing on the inside and glued it on the inside. It's beautiful when it's done. Um, I've made two books like that and I really like the method. I detest sewing, but I like the way it looks in the end so I grit my teeth and I sewed. <laughs> Actually, I think I made three like that and I really, I, I don't know if it's called Hidden Spine, but it is wonderful. All right, so let me go ahead and finish the rest of these. Well, wait, let me go ahead. I guess that what I'll do is I'll show you how to do number four since the camera shut off. Well, number four, which one did I finish already? Um, number two. I already marked it and poked holes. So this is signature number two. I just laid it down the middle here, snipped it off at the end to make sure it's the same length. And then I poked my holes in it. Pretty simple, and it's probably one of the easiest ways to amend a book other than just sewing it in between the signatures, which now because I put that other piece on there, I am not afforded that luxury. I still have a little thread left on here. Let's hope I can make this work. All right, so you go in the middle, just like three hole pamphlet stitch, which it is. Go through here. Then in the end of your strip, well, yes, there we go. Oh, oh. And back in the bottom hole. Like I said, don't pull real tight in the beginning. Because then if you have to make any adjustments, you have to re-loosen and do all that silliness. Just kind of pull it so at least you can get it started for the rest of it. I mean, you can finish it and not have to have a problem with it. All right, now see, I barely have enough here, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and put it in the third hole. And remember, when you tie your knot, one thread has to be on this side, one thread has to be on this side. So this one, I got Lucky's on here. So what I'm going to do when I pull this through, maybe... There we go. So my thread now is when you make it tight. So my thread is on this side and the one's on this side. So you make sure that your knot is securing 
everything in the middle. And because this is waxy, it grips really well. And tie it in a square knot. Oh, those are my paper scissors. No wonder they don't cut very well on waxed stuff. Okay, so here we go. This is signature number two. So it's my second gap. That's one. And this is two. I'm going to load it up with glue. I think PVA might be a better glue. Or, you know, you could use Fabri-Tac if that's your choice. I just happen to have the glitter glue close at hand. Right, so it doesn't really matter which is the top and the bottom of this, although I did I did go ahead and um, mark the top and the bottom of the signature. What I'll do is put it in here in the middle as best I can and then press it down so it stays inside my book there we go so there's the second signature add-on. And I will finish the others, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's completely done. So this is the book that's finished that I altered again. And you can see that I have a lot of room for expansion because look, I mean, even though it pops open like this, there is enough room here throughout this whole thing that I can make it so that it's, you know, it spreads out better. So for me, this is perfect. So you could put the same watercolor paper in there that you put in there the first time. Oh, this didn't go under there very well. Um, you could put the same kind of paper that you did the first time in there again, but I chose to divide my book up into wet and dry spaces. So this is wet, and then the ones that I just put in are computer paper that will be my glue portion or sketching, very little water. And then another water, and then paper, water, and it alternates. So there are... Four and four. There are eight signatures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine signatures. Right? That's right. Because I did five and then I did the spaces in between, which is four. So there are nine signatures in this book. This should last. This should last me a year because I am not a monogamous journaler. <laughs> I have five journals going on at the same time. So I don't just journal in one all year. I, I do different things in different journals. I have a doodle journal. Then I have this one where I practice new, new things in it. Like, um, you know, this kind of stuff where I play around it with letters and different things like that. So I play around in this one. Not often, but I do use this one. So this... I consider this an active journal still, and I have about half of it left to fiddle around with, and still 
because I don't put wet stuff in this, this is not going to have alligator mouth like other things I've made in the past. So there's this one. This is my doodle journal, which uh, there are one, two, there's only two travelers journals in here. Y'all have seen this before. So this is the one I do in color with the black background. And this is the white where I try to stick to just black and white sort of stuff. So that's journal number two. This is journal number three, which I think I talked about recently. There's all kinds of ideas and food things in here. This is mostly related to me watching, uh, keeping track on the amount of carbs that I eat a day because I'm a type two diabetic. So there's that one. Then let's see, I will have this one, which I just did a video on. This will be my daily calendar stuff and I've already started putting things in it. And this will give me lots of room to move around and do things in it. And like I said in the video where I showed how I made this, eventually I will pop all this out. I'll cut this apart and I'll re-sew it with thicker, um, with thicker thread or I'll double the thread on here so that it doesn't, you know, it won't be like this when I get finished because it's so fat full of stuff. I mean, it looks pretty good now. That's a nice picture. Um, so that's number one, two, three, four. And then I will be working uh, for this one, my tan paper, where I do some doodle wet stuff, glue book stuff, you know, that just whatever in this one. And I have a long way to go to fill up this one. So there's that one. And then I'll be working in this one this year. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. And I'm sorry that I had to make an amendment to this, but I thought I better tell you quick because I know y'all just watched the other one on New Year's Day. So I thought I better get this out real quick so that if you need to make amendments, you can do it as fast as possible instead of waiting six months and going, wow, I got big gaps in there. What am I going to do? I don't have paper. Huh. So this should last me. Look, see, it still is flexible so that it'll open flat. You can still do the flat thing. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.